Hey guys, uh, welcome back to our next course when we are talking about Black Arch. We're gonna show uh, some tools specific for Black Arch. We're gonna show techniques for Black Arch, I mean for hacking techniques. Black Arch is basically a Linux based distro and basically it has all of the things that Kali has. But I think my opinion is that the Black Arch is kinda like more for advanced users. You have no desktop environment. Uh, so everything is configured harder, it's installed harder, it's made of for Linux gurus and pros. I know it looks great and I know it's harder than Kali and I know that sometimes this is really pointless because all the things you can do with Kali you can do with Black Arch as well but uh, Black Arch is kind of more like a uh, in-depth in, of, the, of the Linux core and kernel. So for that purpose guys, today uh, we're gonna install Kali as a virtual machine and I'm gonna teach you how to basically configure your Kali in order to look uh, really nice with a, with a nice team, having a different desktop environment and having a Black Arch team on Kali. So uh, let's get started, I'm, I'm gonna be using VMware Workstation, if you use uh, Oracle VirtualBox, really do not matter, it's all the same. So, uh, so now if you are familiar with the procedure of basically installing Kali, you can skip that video to a part where I am basically installing teams and so on. But if you haven't installed a Kali Linux in your life or you don't know how, you can just follow me step by step. And the first step is to download the Kali image. So Kali Linux download. So click the original link right here, which is HTTPS watch the watch for secure connection, Kali .org downloads and choose uh, Kali distribution right here. So here you can choose Kali Linux KDE, right? So we're going to be working over KDE, Plasma Desktop, but I am suggest installing uh, the official GNOME one, the, the original one. Because basically after we are done setting up all the teams and process, you're going to end up having to Kali Linux, the desktop environments, which both works pretty well and basically do not really matter which one you use, you can just Im immediately switch from one to another really easy. If you install KDE, you're gonna be forced, so of course if you do not like that, you're gonna be forced to install non-desktop environment, so you can have that uh, two sessions as well, but my suggestion, and, and it's easier and better for just installing the official one, a GNOME one, and therefore skip to the KDE one. So uh, click here to download via HTTP or torrent, and you're gonna wait until your distribution is just downloaded, the image is downloaded. So not uh, for case not to wait, I've already downloaded mine, so I'm, we, we don't need Chrome anymore. So I've downloaded mine under D drive, uh, VMs, and we have uh, Black Arch, oh, download, sorry. So it's under downloads, I'm gonna copy that into another folder right here, which is gonna be called Kali. I'm gonna copy, copy my image now, so uh, in the back arch, of course, my back arch installation, back arch image. And here is the Kali one. It's always a good thing to keep yourself uh, organized, right? Yeah, so uh, it's a most there. Yep, so we have Kali Linux, the version uh, 2090.2. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna open VMware Workstation here. I have already opened it. So uh, here I'm just gonna go to file and actually go to max screen. Go to file, a new virtual machine. Now click typical next. Now we need to insert the image that we want to drain the resources for our VM. So VMs, copy and choose the image. Right, so now click next. Okay, so now go to other, if you do not basically uh, see the operational system and the version, or you can go to Linux. And now let's go uh, to Debian. You can go either to Debian or you can go to, let's say, other Linux kernel 3.x3, do not matter. So just keep it a 64 bit. Actually, I want, uh, yeah. The, the Linux kernel version 3, 64 bit, next. Now here type Kali Linux 
and now of course choose a directory where the virtual machine is going to be installed so in that case under D VMs now carry OK and click next now we need to set up a storage for our carry machine always make sure you have enough storage so if I go to my PC see I have 200 gigabytes free, free space so always put your virtual machines where basically you have all of storage because they are uh, really independent and new operational systems so you're gonna need storage with own files own registers and so on so here i'm gonna set up a space like 40 gigabytes or let's say yeah 40 is enough then you have an option for storing to disk as a single file or multiple files so the difference is here i always stick to the multiple files it's easier to move the virtual machine to one place or another and basically it reduces performance of very large disks because it's split over the disk, right? But it's easier to move really if you're using a, a new high speed perform or M performance machine, it's really do not matter which one you choose. It's okay. So click next. Now go to customize hardware. Now boost up the RAM memory. Of course, make sure you have enough RAM memory and how you can check how much memory you have. Go to this PC, right click, more properties, or you can show desktop with uh, Windows key D. This PC, properties. Then I see, uh, see I have uh, 60, uh, 60 gigabytes of RAM, so I can freely just say 8 gigabytes for my Kali Linux machine. Now go to processors, um, I like to stick with 2 and 2, like, like 2 processors with 2 cores and then I just leave that to automatic. Now I'll go to network adapter, go to bridged, replace physical network adapter connection state. This is going to provide us a local network like we are connected with a one cable inside. So uh, yeah, that, that's the point of bridging. And then go to display, accelerate 3D graphics if your video card is OK. If it's good, just stick with that option. Now leave that, uh, leave that as it is and now click close. Then go to finish and the operational system is now ready, ready to install. Now click power this machine. Uh, okay, just click OK. This is the keyboard warning about uh, how to hook over and uh, between different tabs of your operational system and your own one. Okay, so the following device can connect to this virtual machine, okay. Now uh, click to graphical install, navigate to graphical install. And one quick uh, thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, the VMware, if you're using VMware Workstation, it's gonna prompt you out with some VM tools installation. And if you run VM tools while installing Kali Linux, you may block your installation and you need to repeat the process. So wait your Kali Linux to be fully installed and then just basically uh, install VM tools. We're gonna uh, show you everything you need to know. So click continue, uh, choose your region, region then uh, language of course, Just wait a little bit to watch everything from the CD or from the image we basically promoted out. So this installation is not the it's not the fastest process, but uh, the background is really a lot slower. And it's tied a lot more tools. And in the same way, it's having no desktop environment. Of course, you, you don't need desktop environment. Uh, you need only a terminal when we are talking about hacking or Linux overall. You can do programming only with the terminal. You can do hacking only with the terminal and some tools like Burp, which Backarch has. So host name, you can define your host name here. And basically the host name, most of the, the host name is gonna be shown when you are connected to a network, your device is gonna have a host name. And when you open a terminal, you're gonna have a host name to your prompt, you're gonna see when we are uh, finished with that process. So click continue, domain name if, if you have any. Now you have to specify the root password and keep in mind that this password you must not forget because uh, if you forget the password, you basically need to reinstall the operational system. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna type mine. Continue. And now again, choose your time zone.
now we're into a partition state right here and basically what we did is we basically separated our hard drive and said that we have 40 gigabytes just for that Kai Linux install and now if I go to menu the Kai Linux installation is gonna see only that 40 gigabytes yeah, as you see here so it's not seeing anything beyond that it's not seeing my real hard drive it's not seeing anything these 40 gigabytes are only for that virtual machine so of course the option here is to click guys installation to all discs but if you are doing that and you want to double boot you may may broke your windows or other os installation if you go with all disk installation so we've, we've basically separated into a virtual drive which vmware is using and our my, my real hard drive which i am using so uh, you have to make the difference now go back click uh, partition disk again and now uh, guided partitioning using that disk so as i said if you use that option and if you want to do a boot with some os you you're gonna break the other os you're gonna erase all the disk and install kai with brand new so now I click continue for most of the videos these tables have an option for dual booting they are reading if you have any os beyond that and basically you are probably out with an option to install alongside windows 10 or other windows so uh all files in a partition of course you can play around with this option it's, it, they can just separate your files in your directories so I'll click continue now I'll click finish changes and write changes to disk yes i'm sure and as you can see swap memory was automatically allocated and basically swap memory is uh, a drive memory from your hard drive or your virtual hard drive it does not really matter it works quite the same it's basically a space a physical space from your hard drive which is being used as a ram memory if your ram memory exceeds or if a process requires a swap memory because there are processes which basically runs on the background and they do not want to basically use and arrange a RAM memory so they can use a little bit of a swap memory and so on and if you uh, run out of RAM your machine is gonna be basically using this swap memory in order to basically work normal yeah it's slower than RAM it's slower but your machine is gonna work because if you run out of memory like you have zero memory your machine is gonna crash because the programs has nowhere to write nowhere to read everything is basically uh, non-free there's a high chance of you uh, getting caught to a deadlock which means requesting resources from a place which is requesting resources from you in the same time so there can be the some deadlocks appeared and basically your machine is gonna most likely to crash if you run out of memory completely you remember the boot screen of that on Windows? The main issue there is RAM memory. It's, it's crashing from the RAM. So now the machine is being installed, installing. And basically, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back when this thing is. So, guys, now we are back. The first step for our installation is basically done. So, uh, here we have a usage of network mirror. So I need to take a few words about the mirror, what is it and why do you need to click yes here. So before the installation you have to make sure you have an internet connection. Because during the installation the Linux is automatically draining resources and files from its repositories. And it's configuring its repositories. So by clicking using network mirror yes, we are automatically setting up our repositories for our Linux to work. If you click no, no repository file is going to be set up. The repository file is located in uh, slash uh, etc slash apt sources, that list. So uh, we have a file from where Linux have all repositories and when we are calling the packed manager, which means apt get in our case, or pacman and so on, when we are calling the packed manager, he is basically reading the file it's reading the, the repository file and it's draining that what we want from that repository stored in that file so if that file has no repositories the operational system is not going to install anything using your package manager so you have to install 
any single dependency, any single package, which have billions of packages, mayo, which is not the case. You sure can find these packages, but uh, it's really time consuming, cannot worry. So to avoid that, we're gonna go over and select a network mirror, which is gonna automatically create our repository file, uh, import the repositories there, make a connection and many resources during the installation. So click continue here. Now click just continue if you, you're not using any proxy. And as you can see, it's configuring the apt, which is our packet manager. And the packet manager of Kali, Debian, Mint, Ubuntu is, is being shared, it's all apt. So there is a way to basically install all the tools you need under Mint, under Ubuntu. So many people nowadays I see install some version of Ubuntu or Mint and just go there and download all the Kali tools they need. There are scripts even for that. I'm, I'm not sure if the script was not called Kali tools, something like that. But there is script which basically adds a repository of Kali and basically install anything you need. So now we are at the part of group boot order. So group is that thing of the boot uh, Linux boot process when it's asking us to choose our operational system. That's all it does. So after after the MBR does its job, you have to to, to to make it more clear, you can go ahead and read for Linux boot process. But one of the steps of that Linux boot process is the group boot order when it just shows all the operational system available and asks us to basically choose one because you obviously cannot boot multiple operational systems simultaneously as a real one. You need some of, some of which to be a real door. So uh, here click install group on the master boot record, which is MBR. Yes, now enter the device. And since we are working here with only one virtual hard drive, you're gonna see nothing else. Click continue. And also, since you are working with, uh, as I said, with your hard drive, you're gonna see nothing but Kali Linux installation. So the group is now installing because if you uh, make another virtual machine, it's gonna have another virtual disk drive just for for itself. So no matter how much virtual machines you have, they're gonna see just their appearance there. So it's fi uh, finalizing the installation. We are almost done with the Kali Linux installation up and running so now i'm gonna pause the video again and when everything is set up and done i'm gonna repause the video and continue to the next steps okay guys so our machine now has been rebooted and now this is the group i was talking about the GNU uh, group we have the version and we have kali linux new linux and we have advanced option for kali new linux now here are some options for recovery mode, checking the file system, making a RAM memory test. And here is just our operational system, so we want to boot, just click enter. And if you don't move anything and leave it as default, it's gonna boot automatically after five seconds. Of course, all this option can be configured. You can configure the background image, you can configure a number of seconds to wait before boot. Basically, that's the cool thing about the Linux, you can do whatever the heck you want. Click enter. Now our machine is being booted. As you can see, it's checking the file systems on the FSDA, clean, number of files, blocks. It's starting all the drivers is needing now. And after a few, a few seconds, we should get a graphical user interface. Yeah, we have the mouse, there it is. Wait a little bit more. I'm gonna go X here. And now this is the Kali default login window. So uh, we have to put our username here. And I want to make a note of a few things. So uh, basically here we've set up during the installation, we've set up a root user, right? So we have a user root. But basically, it's not always a good practice to actually run as a root. Actually, you need to capsulate your machine in order to run as a root. And I'm gonna explain all I mean just by now. Type your password. <clears throat> Sorry. So now 
we have a root user the root user basically can do everything the root user can delete the system using one command the root user can install things the root user can do anything without asking for permission so if you are not sure what you are doing you may end up having a bad bad time with your operational system you can inject a virus you can navigate to a web browser that basically uses uh, bad cookies or malicious javascript so-called cross site scripting injection attacks basically running root is dangerous running root through the file manager is dangerous and i'm i'm guessing if i open the file manager it's gonna say that it's dangerous no okay so uh now so some distros do say that so the good practice is always and what i mean by always always stick with another user so uh basically i'm gonna go here settings i'm gonna go to actually type user here see users and now add the user so the user can be standard or administrator and it's gonna need a pseudo password in order to install things and basically perform actions then can compromise the machine the point here is that when you are not root and you go in some malicious actions like executing and downloading a file which can be potential virus you you can be needing some permissions in order to basically execute that file so uh, that's why we have so much permissions so much users in a huge Linux server but uh, when you're talking about penetration testing and even when we are talking about virtual machine it's good to have root user only because we are running a virtual machine this cannot harm anything beyond that if a malware stacks in and destroys anything we're gonna get harm only that 40 gigabytes that we've basically separated for virtual machine that's the good thing about vms because they capsulate your system and if everything bad happens with that we can only harm the machine itself so we don't really need to set up so much permissions but let's say for example if you're running a real machine not a virtual one it's always better to stick with a different user if you're running a linux server it's always have it's always good to not use a root with, by any case it's always better to uh, run sudo as a normal user than to run root because root can do anything without permissions but a normal user needs permissions for any action it takes so here you just need to type the full name the username the password or you can allow the user to set a password when they log in so that's all you have to do and instead of typing root in the main screen you're just gonna type let's say a user or the name of your user so uh the first thing that we have to do is basically uh, go to options again of course change the uh, resolution because it's bad go to display i think devices display and here change the resolution that suits for you and in my case it's gonna be like that apply keep changes so see now we everything is being okay uh, I see everything it's the resolution here is okay so uh, there is a one problem that can occur if you are using uh, a resolution which is 192 uh, 680 uh, 1080 basically you just need to make a manual configuration of X render so uh, I'm gonna just point you to a nice forum when there are instructions for that resolution bug when where virtual machines are having and this bug occurs only only with virtual machines so you don't have to worry about it when you're restarting it as a real one so just click here go to google.com and search for change in english of course and go for uh, basically So click the form of Ubuntu. Of course, as I said, the steps are quite the same since they share even the pack manager, but that's really not the case. So here there are some options when upon running is gonna set you to resolution of 1920x1080. 
So uh, just run that options. Therefore, you can make a script and force the script to be run as a bootable as the machine boots. So every time it boots, bam, you get that full resolution. Okay, so I'm gonna call that for now. Now I'm gonna open a terminal. I'm gonna show you the packet majors and, and the repositories. So here I have uh, to go to CD uh, app etc apt and now I have sources.v so if I cat that file cat is a program for showing uh, the content of the file on the terminal so cat sources.list and see I have the dep uh, cd rom we have dep cd rom we have dep http so we have the repository installed and the very first thing that we need to do basically after we start the archive machine needs to run an update so I'm gonna see to my home directory when you type cd you're gonna get to your home directory so I'm gonna type uh, app to get update and as I told you before I don't need any studio options here because I am root and I do I can do whatever the one the, the heck I want so update now change that to upgrade you can use tab to out of few sentences and commands yes of course and now the machine is gonna get updated so guys now we have a uh, running Kai Linux machine after that after this update I'm basically going to show how to install VM tools and this is quite a quite an easy procedure just go to uh, view I guess it was uh, VM go to install VM tools install and now something should pop up like a uh, mounting yeah open with files so we have mounted a vm2 so now here open a terminal go just uh, copy that tar archive so cp vmware tools into our root one our uh, home one sorry so i'm gonna cd my home directory i'm gonna basically tar zxvp vmware and now everything is being extracted so now i have folder vmware tools go inside and just go with the uh, file actually cat install to see the instructions so uh, the installing scroll down installing upgrading vmware install.pl so i'm gonna release that again and vmware install.pl so by running that the vm tools is gonna get installed so now click uh, just stick with the default options it knows what to refer so if you're not that advanced on the level of black arch just click all the default options it's uh, good to go it's initializing so you can see it's compiling something on C so mainly Linux is made on C these tools again uh, have some C programs inside and this is the result of compiling them <laughs> always there are some warnings and, and, and errors so do not worry about it so yes yes just stick with the default options And after a minute or two, it's gonna be ready and up and running. So I'll remove the pinpoint here. Okay, now minimize that. Go to the next terminal, see what's happening over there. Enjoy, gamer team. So everything is being uh, installed and it's automatically ejected that uh, media CD on zero. So close the terminal open the new one the previous one sorry so you see the update is going on so guys the basically you have to run the update you have to always run the update because this is crucial always run the update therefore install vm tools when you're installing that as virtual machine set up your resolution script if you are basically having it troubles with if you have any troubles with that resolution and therefore we are ready to move into the next part of, of that tutorial and this basically configuring the Kali Linux to look like a backup just having teams make it uh, a gorgeous one 
So I'm gonna pause until all, all the updates are done. You don't have to, need to do anything while this is updating. After the updates are done, just reboot your machine with the command reboot or you can follow the options right here. Press, press uh, Q of course, you can follow the instructions if there are any. So you can uh, st stick with the options here, uh, click that and then reboot. So uh, no, just stick with the default options, wherever it says just click enter, yes, no. Click with the default options and we are okay and good to go. So uh, the update is going and I'm gonna stop the video guys and see you in the next one when we are going to talk about any configuration, installing different desktop environments and so on. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video guys.